Is there a generational element too? Uh, uh, is this thing going to be driven by teenagers, by, all, by younger people? Um, I think younger people are definitely way more open. Um, they're used to Minecraft experiences, you know. Uh, you know, I have to tell the story of my son sitting in my living with the computer open, and my daughter walked in from my garage office, and he looked up from the computer and went like, "Why did you leave?" I thought she just walked in the room, and he meant, "Why did you leave the Minecraft server we were playing on together?" Right? So they're used to having uh, experiences in this digital way, to have digital representations, and um, I think that they're going to expect that in the future. They're going to expect that they're going to be able to socialize in a virtual way as much as in a, um, in, a, in a physical way. So I do think that younger people are going to demand in a way that this move forward. For, yeah, I was an augmented reality developer for NASA last summer. Wow. wow. Um, yeah, I was in high school, but... Send me your resume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I made um, HoloLens applications for the launch services program at the Kennedy Space Center. Oh my and god. I, like, I was like the lead of the project, um, wow. so I had to basically show people who were like way older than me how to use the HoloLens, and I had to explain to them what augmented reality was and why it was important. Like I uh, presented to the center director, and he asked me why, like how this is any different from just playing games and why he should invest in it, because it costs like three thousand dollars to by each HoloLens. So, so your conclusion is the older generation um, doesn't get it? They, they don't get it. Yet. Yet. Yeah, yeah. There's always people who are going to be open and, and uh, excited. Um, but, um, you know, when you're younger, change is fun. Change is exciting. Um, and when you're older and you're, you know, I think I know when I first was dealing with a lot of colleagues in journalism and I was trying to introduce this concept, journalism was going through a painful, painful process, right? And, and it was really shedding jobs and um, newspapers were closing down. And, and I think that they saw this as a crazy threat, part of the bigger threat. And so I see that sometimes in some of the executives I talk with who are like, uh, you know, somebody can go to watch that. Why would we bother making it? And it's like, yeah, but they can't watch it today, but by the time we finish making it, a lot more people will be excited and interested, and you'll be ahead of the game, and you'll learn so much on how to make it when three years from now, it's becoming more and more common, right? And I really think it will make a bigger social impact in education because a lot of students, uh, especially when they go and when they hit fourth grade, that's when they decide if they might be interested in a STEM career or not. And a lot of people are worried about VR is not supposed to be used for kids under 13, and I think it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's a myth or not, but it's really hurting the adoption in schools to be able to use it for after school or to increase their interest in STEM. Oh, that's interesting. And in other countries, like India and China, like it's 80 times, 60 times the rate of VR adoption. So what, what are we really doing as an ecosystem to increase uh, education in STEM. I've heard from the manufacturers directly that that age 13 thing, we don't know, of course, because VR is relatively new, but the age 13 thing is not about a health or safety issue. It's about 13 year olds, under 13 year olds, your head's too small to wear the headset. So, um, and I've heard that directly from the manufacturers. So um, this is not about like, oh, it's gonna screw up little kids' brains. Um, how do we, um, you know, come back and get me in five years from now, and I, you know, well, everybody's having epileptic fits, but hopefully not. Um, but but, but uh, that's not why the under 13 age was set. So how do we get that out and across so that um, educators can embrace what, for the kids, is a very exciting way to learn about the world and think about the world? Um, that's an interesting question.